Hello and welcome to the What The Flex podcast series, where we chat to some of the best athletes from all over the globe about fitness, lifestyle, social media, and what it means to be an athlete in the 21st century. On episode four of What The Flex, we sat down with fitness influencer Zach Smith to chat about what it takes to have a substantial following on social media. We also go into how an injury led him to finding his true passion and career path. Zach, thank you so much for joining us here today at Ride Aware HQ. We're going to be having a chat about a few things. But firstly, I want to start off with talking about your fitness journey. Can we start from maybe the beginning and what sort of sparked your inter- interest with fitness and how we got to here? <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Um, I, uh, I started in fitness because of a, an unfortunate event, actually. I uh, used to play semi-professional rugby union and... Um, I just finished school when I was like 19 and living out of home on not much money. And they were were paying me to play the the games, which was not much either, maybe like 200 bucks a game or something. And I was actually working as like an intern at the gym that was sponsoring the rugby team. So it just so happened one day in a game that I broke my leg and uh, was unable to play anymore. So they just completely just dropped me and I was made redundant from the work that I was doing at the gym as well. So it all kind of happened all of a sudden and like I had nowhere to really go, no income. And I was kind of like, it was a really depressed kind of time in my life. It was probably maybe six months where I was just like probably the lowest that I've been. So um, when I figured out what I had to do in terms of rehabilitation for my leg, uh, I spent a lot of time in the gym just doing uh, the rehabilitation exercises. And when I started learning a bit more about the body and how, you know, my biomechanics works, how the body works, I started to build a passion for it then because it just kind of felt good. It started to look good. And then the people around me kind of noticed as well. So I, uh, I started helping my friends and family with, uh, with their, their fitness goals. And they started seeing results too. And, and then I realized that I had a passion for helping others do the same thing. And then when I finished doing my course, I started working on the reception at another gym until I was fully qualified. But then uh, basically they started doing PT as soon as I was able. Um, maxed out my hours as a PT. And I loved it, so I, uh, I decided that I wanted to reach a global audience and um, and help more people. So that's when I started my website. That's when my followers started to grow, and then when as my followers started to grow, I kept adding value to my online people and my followers. And then as soon as I was kind of able to scale the business, I scaled the business and got people to work for me and had a team. And and uh, ever since then, it's kind of been, as I said before, just progressive. But um, here we are, about six years later after establishing my first uh, company, yeah. I want to talk about that strategy that you mentioned um, about growing your followers and getting more people to sort of view your content. What did you do and how did you figure that out? You know what? It's uh, There was no real like recipe for it because it was trial and error. But in in my head, it made sense. It was all logical. Like if I could get photos taken of me from someone that's posting the pictures on their Facebook or Instagram that they have 3 million followers – then it just made sense for me to go and shoot with them, especially if they wanted to shoot me for free. So my investment was to be traveling to them so they didn't have to essentially go out of their way to shoot me. But I know that they wanted to shoot me, but they didn't want to spend their time or money to shoot me. So I just had to go to them. So once I uh, made the effort and the investment in time and energy and money to actually get to them, it was kind of like a no-brainer because they would take great images of me if I was in good shape. And they would post them on their socials. And then from that, I'd generate more followers of my own. And uh, those followers, if I'm, you know, nurturing them the right way, giving them enough value consistently, then, um, you know, they'll turn into clients eventually somewhere down the track. So I am always try and be like pretty transparent with my followers and people that, you know, support me. And like, I think without having like a personality and like a actual uh, a persona or a personality behind what you're posting online, Those people will be so transient and they'll just come and go. But if you're really educating people, adding value, then they'll kind of stay. So I think that's something that I've always tried to work on as well. It's being really kind of, I don't know, open, transparent with my followers to make sure that they want to stay. When we're doing different variations of the hand grip, one with the push down, one with the extension, we're hitting different heads of the tricep. So make sure when we're doing buys, tries, make sure you change up your hand grips. So is Instagram for you mainly a educational platform or do you prefer to sort of say you're a bit more versatile and post athletic, uh, aesthetically pleasing 
content as well. Yeah, I mean, you want to have diversity there. I think like, obviously I like posting photos that I know is going to get a good reaction. So when I'm like really lean or um, yeah, doing a shred or something like that, like I know that they're going to do well. But I also love to post like your regular like workout videos. So like I'll do carousels now on Instagram where it'll be like you know, five exercises that I do at the gym and just like a basic video of each. And then I'll just say, save this video uh, and do it in your own time. And like, you know, you get a few thousand people saving it. So I know that I'm adding value there because they're saving it to do it in their own time, which is great. So I like to have a bit of um, diversity with the stuff that I post. Um, somewhere between like, you know, the aesthetic things that I know are going to get likes and then the stuff that doesn't necessarily look aesthetically pleasing, but is adding a lot of value to my uh, followers. So you're talking about being multi-platformed and that's been, I guess, your most successful um, method of doing what you're doing. Can you explain, I guess, for people that are not as social media savvy, what that means and what that looks like? So to have a presence on all social media platforms or as many of the main ones possible is a good idea because some people, and I'm sure if you think about it yourself, there are apps you open more often than others and everybody's going to be different. There are the most popular ones in the world, uh, as we know, like Instagram, Facebook. However, some people rather use Snapchat. Some people would rather use, you know, LinkedIn, for instance. Um, and like, if you're trying to sell product or if you're trying to look for a job, obviously you go to LinkedIn. It's like some people are, you know, going and putting the same content on all different platforms when it's not tailored for each platform. So you need to be conscious of what content you're creating and what platform you're putting it on because there is like specific plat uh, content you should be putting on each platform. So like long form content, obviously YouTube, because people are, you know, opening up the YouTube app going, I'm going to sit here and watch a video. Like they're ready to do that. On Instagram, you just know that they're going to be scrolling past and you need to catch their attention. And it's very short form. Maximum is going to be one minute. So you create content for that specifically. You can't just be posting everything. So you, you wouldn't make a one minute ad for uh, for Instagram and then repost on, on YouTube. It doesn't make sense to do that. So you just need to be kind of conscious that it's not going to work over every single platform, but you do need to be present on each one. A bit more of a broader question now. What are you most passionate about? I'm still passionate about helping other people. I think it's a little bit different from what it used to be in the fact that when I first started as an online coach or a PT, it was very uh, physical and it was more of the, the aesthetic that I was more concerned about. I thought that, you know, I was helping people look better. And nowadays it's more about helping people realise that they can achieve a better version of themselves, whether it be mental, spiritual, uh, physical, anything or all of the above. So I want to try and, I guess, be more of a mentor for people. I really believe in the fact that if you're putting out positive energy to the universe, law of attraction is very strong. And I feel like I'm doing just that every single day trying to be as happy as I can, positive, motivating other people to do the same. And I feel like now it's starting to pay off. I'm starting to get a lot of good things happen and I really want to roll with it. I really want to um, continue to progress and continue to throw out good energy to the universe and hopefully it just continues to come back. When I was a younger man, I, uh, I didn't have a mentor. Like I had a sales mentor when I first started in the gym. But apart from that, like I didn't really have anyone that I looked up to and the, you know, the, the social media space wasn't, wasn't what it's like now. Like if you go on, you know, Instagram or Facebook, there's like a plethora of people that, you know, are, are gurus and there's a lot of out, people out there that are, are real like gurus that can, you know, help you and, and mentor you. But when I first started, it wasn't like that. Like the platform wasn't so saturated with amazing information. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the same. So. If I can be someone that people look up to and, you know, better their lives and that's that's the type of man that I want to be. So I think I'm in the position now to to do that in a more holistic way rather than just, you know, the physical aesthetic side. So my goal now and my passion now is um is still helping people, but just more of a holistic way, yeah. What is the most difficult thing that you've ever had to overcome? <sighs> well, I mean, I think we briefly talked about it like the, the injury was just terrible because I'd put all my value at that point, the value that I had for myself and the self-worth that I'd kind of developed was from always being really good at sport growing up. So I uh, actually got a, a sporting scholarship at a, a grammar school um, for high school and I was playing, you know, basketball, rugby. Uh, I played soccer for New South Wales before that as well. So I was always like good at team sport, 
So I think when I finished school and I started playing semi-professional and I was getting paid and stuff, in my head and, you know, from what I could see of the foreseeable future, you know, maybe my career was to be a rugby player. So when I was injured, it was kind of like, you know, you know my world kind of imploded. I was like, well, what am I going to do? Like, I'm, I can't even, I'm not earning money. I got fired from my job. I'm living out of home. Like I was sitting in the shower on a chair, like just crying. It was fucked. Like it was a bad time. So I just didn't know what I was going to do. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that that was, you know, one of the worst, yeah, worst times of my life for sure. And then for someone who is probably going through something similar, someone else in the world, they've put all their eggs in one basket. They're wanting to be an athlete or a sports star of some sort. What advice would you give to them if they were to get an injury and all their plans had to change? If they have other hobbies, if they have other things they enjoy doing, if there's like, you know, subtopics or like things that they want to study that might, you know, turn into a potential like side hustle or a career or, you know, for people to have more diversification in their in their life because as I had it, it was just like, I'm going to be a rugby player. And then that was just stripped from me and like that put me in a spot where I felt like I had nothing. So I think for people to diversify and to try and not, you know, live so unilaterally and just kind of like have a, some sort of side hustle or some sort of like something that keeps them motivated and stimulated that isn't their main hustle Um, because, you know, you never know what's going to happen and um, it's good to be able to pivot. That would be my advice. And you were talking about how you are liking to do a lot of reading at the moment. What are you reading? What have you read? Which favourite? Spiritual books, to be honest. I'm uh, last year at the end of, well, yeah, maybe from like July, August last year, I uh, started reading more spiritual books, uh, Eckhart Tolle, um, The Power of Now and A New Earth, two of my favourite books, um, The Secret, a whole bunch of other stuff like about affirmations and just projecting positive energy to the universe and spirituality and being present and it's changed my complete outlook. Like my life is my life purpose and my quality of life is just amazing now. It's so much different from what it was last year. I have so much less mental clutter. Um, I'm not anxious anymore. Like I don't have any depression. Everything is like hunky dory. I feel fantastic. And I think it's, you know, a lot of it is due to becoming more awake spiritually and um, and doing more reading. And then what are you looking forward to? Is Do you have a specific goal in mind? Where do you want to be sort of a year from now? I've got a couple of goals. I'm doing YouTube very, uh, like it's full time now. I'm going to do two or three videos a week. I'm already releasing two at this point. And I want to put out, you know, three vlogs each week at least. Um, and the plan is to double my uh, my followers on YouTube um, by June. So that's probably another 130,000. I want to get to 250,000 uh, subscribers by June, which is a, it's quite a bold kind of uh, task or like goal. But I think if you don't set them so that they're challenging, then they're not really, you know, worth doing. But in saying that, also, it's very important to have small goals along the way, which I've kind of divided up to. But in my head, in 2016, it was a really, really good year for me financially and uh, and everything was running really well. And the reason for that was I was very present on all platforms. So I was using YouTube. Um, Periscope was around then. So I was doing a live stream on Periscope. Uh, I had my Snapchat. Uh, Facebook was going, I was running ads and and everything was working really well. And that was actually my best financial year to date. So the proof's in the pudding and I know exactly what I need to do. I know the format that I need to run by in order to be back in that position. So me being in the headspace that I'm in now, knowing that I'm going to be, you know, doing six months of sobriety, having a living videographer, there's no reason why at the end of this year, I can't be doing exactly what I was doing in 2016 which is really exciting because that was, yeah, as I said, the best financial year of my life. So that's the goal is to get back to how I was in 2016 and then surpass that. 
Zach, thank you so much for coming in today and having a chat to us about some really important points of not only the fitness journey, but travel, life, meditation now as well, um, and bringing, I guess, all your passions to us and um, being able to feed off of that. So thank you so much. You're welcome. I had a good time. Really enjoying being here. So great. Until thank next you. time. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to dry up before the end of this podcast. So Tana, 15 like- minutes and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. You- Ooh, I'm so sorry. Throwing your notes at me? <laughs> Yikes. There you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wish um, it hit me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Should we wrap it up? <laughs>